Strong communities, strong communities. The very best places for you and me are strong communities. When we listen, when we share, things always go better. When we show how much we care, we grow strong together. Strong communities, strong communities. The very best places for you and me are strong communities. Hi, my name is Barry Stewart Mann. And I'm Deborah Strayhorn, and welcome to Storybooks for Strong Communities. In this series of videos, we're going to be sharing with you some of our favorite stories from children's picture books. Stories that show the importance of being in a community, of supporting other people in your community, of having a strong community around you. And if you like them, you can find them at your favorite library. Or if you really want them, you can purchase them at a local bookstore. So now it's time for... Storybooks Story for, for Strong Communities. I love going to the grocery store. I always make a list before I go to make sure I get everything I need. And when I get there, the first section I go to is fruits and vegetables. I like that because I get to taste test a grape here, a cherry there, to make sure they're nice and sweet. Well, in today's story, Mama goes shopping, but she goes to an outdoor market. Today's story is Baby Goes to Market by Atanuke, illustrations by Angela Brooksbank. Now, in this story, as you can see, Mama has a head wrap and a basket. That's because she doesn't use a shopping cart like we do. She doesn't use a bag. She puts all of her groceries in the basket on her head. So that's what we're going to do. She has a head wrap. Now, I don't usually do this. I use a shopping cart. And then she puts the basket right on top of her head. There. And what does she do with baby? Well, she ties baby securely in a nice wrap underneath her arms so that baby is securely on her back. Her hands are free and so are babies. Now when they go to market, the market is crowded. It's full of people greeting one another and shopping, looking for fruits, vegetables, and other wares. Baby goes to market and baby is excited. Baby is smiling. And baby sees everybody, and everybody sees baby. Well, mama doesn't have a list, but she knows just what she wants. She stops at the rice vendor, and while she's there, one of the village people sees baby and gives baby four bananas. Well, baby can't eat four bananas, so baby eats just one and puts the other in mama's basket. But mama doesn't see, because mama is shopping for palm oil and beans, and she even stops to get some flip-flops. And somebody sees baby and gives baby some sweet coconut. Well, baby can't eat all the coconut, so baby puts the other coconut in mama's basket. And that's the way it goes. All day, mama stops here and there. And the villagers see baby, and they give baby whatever they think baby wants. Well, as the day goes on, the basket gets heavier and heavier, and Mama thinks, oh, baby must be tired and hot and hungry. So she calls for a taxi so that they can get home faster. And she takes the heavy basket from her head, and she sees all of these things in the basket. Mama says that she didn't put all those things in the basket, and she says, baby, where did these things come from? You put that in the basket? And all of the vendors in the village, they just laugh and smile and said, we gave those to baby. Baby was hungry and baby was sweet. And sometimes baby was naughty, but the village came to support baby. And that is the story of Baby Goes to Market, written by Atanuke, illustrated by Angela Brooksbanks. And you can find this story 
at your local library. It's a wonderful story about community and how the village comes together to help one another. Well, that was a fun story. Baby got all that food and its mother didn't even know. And that showed how a community can be very generous. Sharing food is a wonderful way to make a community strong, to build connections in community. And our next story is about a group of people who do just that. They share food. Now, I don't know about you, but where I live, I know most of my neighbors. And we even get together sometimes to share a meal. Sometimes we'll all eat inside, or sometimes we'll eat at tables outside. And sometimes one family or one household will cook for everyone and we'll just give them a little money. Or sometimes everyone brings a little something to contribute. Well, this story is called Empty Fridge. It's in this book by an author and illustrator named Gaetan Doremus. Now, you, his name might sound strange. Gaetan Doremus is an illustrator and author from France. And the book was originally published in French. It was called Frigo Vide, which means empty fridge. And you can tell the illustrations are simple line drawings with splashes of color. And the cover has an illustration of the apartment building where the story takes place. And you might notice that every floor has a different color. The bottom floor is orange, then yellow, green, red, and white. It's not because they've painted their apartments those colors. You'll see it has a special significance in the story. Well, in the story it says that it's evening in the city. And we can tell from the pictures that it's summertime because everyone's wearing light clothes and lots of people are outside. And it says that everyone has had a very, very busy day. Oh, some people were sitting out on their balcony talking on their phone to friends and relatives. Others were running around doing errands, keeping going this way and that. Some ended up spending a lot of the day with friends in their apartment having a nice long lunch and looking after their children. Others were busy riding on a bicycle doing a long bike ride. And still others might have been out playing a musical instrument on the street for the passers-by, who would then toss little bits of money for the music. Now, this book is very French, and in France, sometimes people go to the supermarket and get big cartloads of food, and they have enough food for a couple of weeks. But there are also a lot of people who kind of still do it in the old-fashioned way, where they go to a bakery or a bread shop, and they go to a fruit shop, and they go to a meat market, and they get just enough food for a day or two or three, and it stays fresh, and then they go out again, or sometimes they go every day. And that's kind of what's happening in our story. But on this day, everyone was so busy that nobody had a chance to go to the market. And now it's evening, and they all have an empty fridge. And the story focuses first on a man named Andrew. He's down at the bottom, and we see him by the stairs on the bottom floor of the building. And he has a musical instrument. We can tell he's the one who was playing music out on the street. And he has a long beard and frizzy hair. And all he has to eat are three carrots. What can you do with three carrots? So Andrew has no choice but to go upstairs to his first neighbor. He knocks on the door, and there is a man named Nabil. And the illustration shows that Nabil has an apartment full of bicycles and bicycle tires and bicycle equipment. He's clearly a bicycle mechanic, and he was the one riding his bicycle all day. And Andrew asks, I have three carrots. Do you have anything that we can make dinner with? And Nabil says, oh, not really. I have a chunk of cheese and two eggs. And they think, what can you do with carrots and cheese and eggs? Not much, really. So they decide to go upstairs to the next floor. When they get there, it's a family. It's a mother and father, Lucy and Sandro, and their daughters, Julie and Lilia. And Andrew and Nabil ask them, and Lucy and Sandro say, we don't have it very much at all. All we have are... This is what they say, a capsicum. That's a kind of green pepper. And we have some chives. That's something that's chopped up and green and kind of spicy. What can they do with these things? So, all together, you know what they do. They go upstairs. 
And there, they go to the apartment of a woman named Claire. Claire is very tired. She's exhausted. She's the one who was running around this way and that, doing errands, keeping very busy. And they ask her if she has anything, and she says, all she has is five red tomatoes. She says, maybe we could make a salad. But they decide they don't really have enough, like lettuce or greens, not quite enough to make a salad. So, you know what they do? They go upstairs to the top floor. That's Rose's apartment. Rose is a little old lady. She's the one who is sitting out on her balcony, talking on her phone to her friends and relatives. And when they all arrive, Rose says, whoa, all my neighbors. And they say, Rose, we need to make dinner, but these are the things we have. And they show her. And she says, well, all I have is a little bit of flour and some milk and some butter. They realize that they can't make dinner. But Rose says, well, why don't you all come inside and we'll get comfortable. And maybe we can think of something. So they all come in and they think and they wonder. And suddenly Rose jumps up and says, I know we can make a quiche. Can you say quiche? Have you ever heard of a quiche? A quiche is a kind of pie, but it's not a sweet pie. It's really a pie that's made with eggs and vegetables and lots of things. And they realized they had the eggs, they had the flour and the milk, that they could make a crust, and they had all the vegetables that they could put in and the cheese to put it on top. So they decided to make a quiche. So they all ran into Rose's kitchen and they got out the knives and they started mixing things. And I just want to go back to the building. Remember all those colors? Well, you can remember Andrew had carrots and Nabil had cheese and eggs and the family had chives and a capsicum, a green pepper, and Claire had tomatoes and then Rose had flour and milk and butter. You see, that explains the colors. Well, they were chopping and they made up, they used the eggs and the flour and the milk to make it and then they put it into the, the tray and then they, they put more of the eggs in and they put the vegetables in and they sprinkled cheese on top and then they put it into the oven to let it cook. And while it was cooking, they started hearing sounds. They heard sounds outside the window and they all went out to Rose's balcony and there they looked out across the city on all the other balconies they saw groups of people and they were all making quiche and they looked down at the ground and they saw tables out on the street and on the lawns and on the grassy areas between the streets and on the sidewalks and people were gathered around and they were eating quiche and they could smell the smell of the quiche coming from the oven. Oh, that quiche looked and smelled so good. They could see it. It had all that yummy food, the eggs, the vegetables. It was a plate full of color. You know it must be good for you if it has so many colors. And it smelled just wonderful. But at this point, the story takes a little twist because it turns out we see the quiche in a little bubble over Andrew's head. And it turns out it was just a dream. It was Andrew, the man on the bottom floor, the man with the three carrots, dreaming of having dinner with his neighbors. But then he gets up and he takes his carrots and we see that he has a shopping cart. And we realize that maybe he doesn't really live there. Maybe he was just sitting and resting there. He might be someone who doesn't have an and all the time home, but just finds places where he can be. And he was going off to do that. But then, just as he's about to leave, Nabil comes running down the stairs, and I think this is in the real part of the story. Nabil says, Andrew, aren't you coming to have dinner with us? And so we see Andrew go upstairs to have dinner with his neighbors. And that's the story of Empty Fridge. It's a wonderful story that you might be able to find in your library. You can see I did. <laughs> and it's a great story about sharing. Because when we share food, when we prepare food together, when we eat food together, and even when we work together to clean up after the meal, it helps us to make our community, our connections among ourselves, even stronger. 
Our last story for today is another story about sharing and how communities come together. It's from this book, Thank You Amu by Oge Mora. Amu lived on the top floor of a tall, tall building. She was making dinner, and this was going to be the best dinner she had ever made. It was a thick red stew. Thick red stew, big black pot, delicious, delicious. Look what I've got. Oh, this is going to be the best stew I ever made. I'll just read until it's done. And she started reading a book. And then there was a knock on the door. Oh my, I wonder who that is. Hello there, it's the little boy from down the hall and he's playing with his little red car. Hi, Amu. I was playing and I smelled something really yummy. What is it? It's my thick red stew. Mmm. I've got a lot. Would you like some? Yes, please. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Thank you, Amu. He finished the stew and then he left. And Amu stirred the pot again. Mmm, thick red stew, big fat pot, delicious, delicious, look what I've got. <laughs> and then she went back to reading her book. And then there was another knock on the door. Oh my, I wonder who that could be. Hello there, it's the lady police officer from down the street. Well, I'm fine, Amu, but I have to say I was just patrolling the sidewalk and I could not resist the smell coming from this apartment. What is that you are cooking? It's my thick red stew. Mmm, it sounds so tasty and it smells so good. Well, I've got enough. Would you like some? Why, I would love some. Oh, thank you, Amu. Mmm. And the lady police officer left, and Amu went back to stirring her stew. This time, why don't you try to do it with me? Thick red stew, big fat pot, delicious, delicious, look what I've got. Thick red stew, big fat pot, delicious, delicious, look what I've got. Oh. <sighs> and she went back to reading her book. Oh my, there's another knock at the door. I wonder who that could be this time. Hello there. It's the construction worker from down the block. He's been working in the community for quite some time. Hello there. Well, hello, Amu. I was busy working and I just couldn't Resist, there is a delicious smell wafting out your window and coming down to my construction site. Amu, you've got to tell me, what is that you're cooking? <laughs> it's my thick red stew, and I've got a plenty. Would you like a bowl? Oh, why, Amu, I'd love a bowl. Oh, I'm just going to put my things down. Oh, why, thank you, Amu. Mmm, this is fantastic. And when the construction worker left, Amu went back to stirring her stew. Can you help me again? Thick red stew, big fat pot, delicious, delicious. Look what I've got. <sighs> and she went back to reading her book. And then there was another knock at the door. Oh, my, my, my. I wonder who that could be. Oh, it's the hot dog vendor from the corner. Hello there, Mr. Vendor. Why, hi there, Amu. I was busy down moving my cart up and down the street, you know, selling the hot dogs. 
when I got to tell you, even though the smell of my hot dogs is really good, I smelled something coming right out your window here. It was delicious. What are you cooking? Oh, everybody's been asking. It's my thick red stew. Ooh. I've got plenty. Would you like some? Well, I would love some. Yeah. Oh, what? Can you say this with me? Thank you, Amu. I love this. Mmm. Mmm. That's great. And when the hot dog vendor left, she went back to stirring her stew. Thick red stew. Big fat pot. Delicious. Delicious. Look what I've got. And then she went back to reading her book. And for the rest of the afternoon, people from all over the neighborhood just kept coming. Who is it? It's me, the shop owner from down the street. Well, I have some thick red stew. Would you like some? Who is it? I'm the cab driver. I've got some thick red stew. Would you like some? Who's there? <laughs> it's the doctor. Stu. Who's there? I'm an actor. I live down the block. Thick red stew. Hello? I'm a lawyer, you know, down the, down the hall. <laughs> okay, I guess you want some stew too. Who's there? I'm a dancer. Who's there? <laughs> a baker. Hello, who's there? I'm an athlete. I, I heard, I smelled the smell. Oh. Who is it? Uh, I'm a bus driver. You know me from the bus. Oh. Who is it? Why, it's me, the mayor. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Of course I've got a bowl of stew for you. Soon it got dark out, and the streetlights came on, and it was time for dinner all across the neighborhood. But when Amu went to her big fat pot to look at her thick red stew, she had a surprise waiting for her. Oh, well, it's time for dinner. Oh, my. It's all gone. There's nothing left. This was going to be the best meal I ever had. What shall I do? I wonder who that could be. There's nothing left. Come in. It was everybody. It was all the people that had come into Amu's door that day. And they all came in and they said, Amu, we are not here to get. We are here to give. And they started handing Amu, oh, a big bowl of salad. And there was a whole plate of fruit and yummy sandwiches with some pizza and hot dogs. And there were sweets as well. And all kinds of things, cheese and tomatoes and eggs. And they said, Amu, we loved your stew so much. This is our way of saying thank you to you. And they all sat down, and Amu had to admit it was... The best meal ever. And afterwards, everyone stayed, and they sang, and they danced, and they laughed together. Because in strong communities, people support each other. And so in this book, Thank You, Amu, by Oge Mora, just like in our other two books today, we see how communities are built around sharing especially sharing food. When people eat together, they feel a connection with each other. And it's wonderful to see how people can share food, they can share their experiences and their laughter, and it builds our strong communities. Strong communities, strong communities, the very best places for you and me are strong communities. When we listen, when we share, Things always go better When we show how much we care We grow strong together Strong communities Strong communities The very best places for you and me Are strong communities